Have you ever wanted to catch a queen ant and start your own ant colony? Are you wondering where to find them, when they swarm, what equipment you need, and what catching techniques you may require? Well, you're in luck because today I'm breaking down everything you will need to know. Let's jump into the excitement of queen ant hunting and get you ready to catch your first queen ant. First of all, check out what I've managed to catch over the past few weeks. These include a bunch of meat ant queens or Iridomimex pipuris, some big Nelly queens or pavement ant queens, and finally, a few of these small ones, which I believe are Nylandia rosier queens, but I'm not too sure on this one. So be sure to stick around and get some info about how to catch a wide range of queen ants, as well as some insightful tips that will ultimately be beneficial to your ant knowledge all round. Let's get into it. Here are a few things you will need to consider. When and where to look and how to identify a queen ant. I have made videos on this entirely in the past. However, in short, it is best to look on pavements and walkways in rural areas, on warm nights or days in spring and summertime, a day or two after a rainstorm. And to identify a queen ant, you should be looking for an ant that is larger than the typical worker, that has a large gaster than normal. If you would like more info on this, be sure to check out my previous few videos. Now, before you go looking for queen ants, you will need supplies. Most people tend to use test tubes, preferably plastic to prevent any breaking, and some cotton to act as a plug. However, I tend to be a bit different, as I use these small vials. This is because they are great for catching all types of queens, they can be stored easily, hence they can allow you to catch a lot more queens in one hunt. For both these methods, here are some techniques to make catching less difficult. Firstly, you can line the opening of the vial or test tube up with the queen's head and give them a bit of a nudge on the bottom with the cap or cotton and they tend to run straight in, just like this. Secondly, you can make a triangle shape with your hands and wait for the queen to climb on them. Then, you can put the test tube over the queen and wait for it to climb up on them. This way should only be done if you know that ants don't sting, like this big Nally queen for example. Finally, here is a completely different method of catching and storing queens altogether. You can use a tub and rub some escape-proof fluoron around the edges. Then, using featherweight tweezers, you can collect the queens in an extremely efficient and time-saving way. I would only recommend this if you have a heap of queens out and you only have a limited amount of time to catch them, as queens may decide to attack each other when they are in the same container, so be careful. After catching the queens, you will need to put them into a test tube setup. Again, I have made a video on this in the past, however, in short, just fill the tube halfway with clean water and put a cotton ball down until it soaks up some of the water. This will create the perfect founding environment for a queen once it is in there and the other end has been plugged off by a bit of cotton. There you have it, everything you need to know about catching a queen ant. And if you found this video at all helpful, please consider giving me a like and subscribe. It really helps me out. And now, I have a question for all of you. Have you ever caught a queen ant before? And if so, what was your first one? Please let me know in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.